Good morning, everyone. So uh, my name is Joe Hagen. I'm with Splunk. We're going to talk about data analytics at the tactical edge. At least that's what the title is. So we'll see where this conversation goes. Uh, I'm not going to do this whole slide. We do this thing at Splunk where we introduce ourselves and we talk about ourselves for a few minutes. But uh, most important thing up here is I've got two daughters. I've been at Splunk for five years, been in the IC for basically my entire career, and pineapple does belong on pizza. Very important. Um, so what are data analytics? It's a fact, so pineapple does belong on pizza. Uh, what are data analytics? Well, there's a lot of different use cases. Security, compliance, observability, IT operations, all kinds of things. I got a lot of, apparently a lot of pictures here, a lot of animations. There we go. As defined by Google, which is the authority on most things, data analytics is the process of analyzing, transforming, and exploring data in an effort to find patterns uh, and trends that can provide insights and help make decisions. TLDR, data analytics, converts raw data into actionable insights. Right? So that's the goal. Often the result is pretty pictures. That's what we tend to go for when we think of data analytics. And if we're using Splunk uh, or things like Splunk, I work for Splunk, so it's going to be Splunk heavy. Sorry, not sorry. Um, but results in pretty pictures. Now, traditional data analytics, not at the tactical edge, we've got things like server farms. Right, lots of racks of servers, tons of compute. Uh, I spent 20 years ago, I was an intern rewiring a data center, and they really haven't changed much since then, uh, except for I'm not climbing underneath of floor tiles getting covered in dust anymore. But when it comes to server farms, you know, you've got a lot of compute, a lot of storage, a lot of capabilities that you don't have at the tactical edge. In cloud, you know, it's you shift the uh, responsibility to somebody else. You don't really have to worry about scaling anymore. It scales with ease, but you've got access to essentially you know, limitless compute capabilities. That is not the case when it comes to the tactical edge. Um, we can define tactical edge in a variety of ways, uh, being that you all are doing what you're doing. We're going to say it fits in a carry-on, probably. Um, this little PC right here, this little mini PC, is actually my, my home server. So I've got this little guy here. It's running Proxmox. I've got a couple of VMs on there. I've got, I'm running my Splunk Home Lab on here and a variety of things. Limited resources, but capable. That is not my gaming desktop, but it looks similar. Um, I'm too old for the lights anymore, but uh, you know, it's similar capabilities to a mini PC, a little bit more advanced, a little bit more storage. Uh, maybe it has a GPU. Mine has a GPU. We'll talk more about that in a bit. And then this one, flyaway kits. Maybe some of you are familiar with this. So far more capable, not quite the resources as uh, you know, a server farm or cloud capabilities, but you've got a lot more things you can do with a flyaway kit at the edge. I've been waiting to sneak this one in. If you grew up in the 90s, watched Aladdin, you know, phenomenal cosmic power, itty bitty living space seems to apply for things at the tactical edge. Do what we can with something small. With Splunk, which works on all of these that I showed you, uh, we've got something called machine learning toolkit. So this is uh, a variety of ML capabilities. Uh, we've got pre-built algorithms. These are open source. Guided workflows. You can manage your own models, build your own models. All of this is able to be done on CPUs. You don't need GPUs to do this. So you can. I'm doing this at home on that tiny little PC that fits in the palm of my hand. Uh, there are folks out that use this on their flyaway kits that are using this MLTK on their kits right now. Um, if you have access to a GPU, you can take advantage of that, but you don't need to. And like I said, there's 50 different algorithms out there that come with this, and it's free, and you just install it on top of Splunk, and boom, you're good to go. You've got, essentially, ML capabilities. Some of this looks like what you're going to see up here in the screenshots. So this is actually a screenshot from my home lab. 
again, that tiny little mini PC, right? I'm looking at my own data. It's my daughter's computers, my computers. Um, but I did nothing but install this app and essentially look at, I took a query that was built in to MLTK. Uh, and I wanted to look at numerical outliers um, for successful logins to Windows. And so you can, I know it's a little small, but the uh, yellow up there highlights those outliers. So I just ran it through this baked in ML, um, this particular model, and it showed me that in just a few seconds without a GPU. Um, there's another algorithm we can use called DCOA. <clears throat> so there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of acronyms in anything, but especially in ML. Um, this is another one that comes out of the box. So this is particularly good at looking at non-numerical data and finding uh, outliers within that. So uh, frequency analysis, uh, this example here is on Bitcoin transactions. So we're looking at non-numerical data, Bitcoin addresses are um, alphanumeric, and you can give it within the, the GUI here, this is all in Splunk, um, you can give it different field names. Hey, I wanna look for numerical, or I wanna look for outliers within maybe uh, different volumes of, of Bitcoin transactions or particular uh, Bitcoin addresses, and again, this is just an example of Bitcoin, but anything that's non-numerical, this one is, is really good for. Kalman filter is another one that comes in, so this is particularly great at cutting through noisy, noisy data, so network traffic is a common one. Uh, this is just an example up here of running that through and doing a, uh, a forecast, a prediction based on trends. What does it look like moving forward? This is a new-ish app for me. It's been out there for a little while. Um, this is essentially an app within Splunk, and apps are, they're not binaries. If you don't know much about Splunk, it's just a kind of a, an install on top. Um, this app is really intended to be a complete end-to-end -end example of how you can operationalize machine learning within Splunk itself. It's really just a guide to walk you through, but it's a real-world scenario for looking at uh, DNS data to detect uh, what's legit and what's not. Um, so it walks through and you can build your own model. It has some sample data in there, but you could actually take this and operationalize it in your own environment. And again, um, the theme here is free. This is, this is available for free. So this is all Splunk heavy up until this point. Again, sorry, not sorry. But here's another thing that I started playing with at home. Um, there's no reason you couldn't use something like this. Who's all used ChatGPT? Hopefully everybody, right? Yeah, okay. Um, so there's something out there called Private GPT, or that's kind of what everybody's calling it. I installed this on that little mini PC I have. You could put this on your flyaway kits. You could put this at the edge. Um, in this case, I ran this at home, and I simply asked it. I downloaded my uh, LLM that I wanted to, and I said, hey, give me a... Give me a Splunk query. If I didn't know anything, give me a Splunk query on how to find uh, what was it, successful logons or failed logon attempts. And it actually, the LLM output that, um, that for me. So I could take that and apply that as a data analytic within my Splunk environment. You could use this for a variety of things. Is it slow? Yes, it is. Without a GPU, it is slow. Um, that query took 200 seconds to run. When I hooked it into my GPU, which was a 3090 NVIDIA you know, off the shelf, took four seconds. So GPU really can greatly, greatly decrease the time that it takes to run this. Um, it absolutely works though. I actually got this to run on a Raspberry Pi 5 uh, with eight gigs of RAM, even slower, but it still works. So you could totally use this at the edge and it is completely air gapped. So if you're in an environment where you need to remain air gapped, you can go download this and run it. I did try to, to make some money off this one. Um, I wanted to see if I could write some Python code and uh, yes, it can. And I said, hey, here's your arguments. I gave it some natural language. Write me a Python code that trades Bitcoin and Dogecoin on Binance US uh, with a goal of increasing my holdings. Uh, it output everything that I needed, the Python modules I needed to install, the actual Python code itself, and uh, everything but the API key. So I grabbed my own API key, threw 100 bucks in there, I lost almost all of it, but it executed the Python code correctly. So, um, you know, give it the right parameters that you might be able to get rich off this, probably not, but uh, it can successfully write Python code.
So if you don't know anything about LLMs, this is not a talk on LLMs, but there are a ton of open source LLMs out there you can grab that are specifically geared towards writing data analytics, writing code, uh, natural language in general. There's a bunch of things out there. It's really cool. So as far as private GPT goes, if you wanted to go down that route, uh, there is something called Olama. This allows you to basically download any LLM you want that's open source and bring it into, uh, into this GUI. Um, you can also interact with your GPU. So you can tell it to open up an API and hit it. Um, MLTK is out there for free as well. So this, this is part of Splunk and the DGA app is there as well. Uh, something I'm working on now, we'll see if I get there, but uh, I'm gonna try to build a custom Splunk app to essentially take advantage of this and output within Splunk, uh, Splunk queries. So give it some natural language and then output. We'll see what happens. So it was actually uh, a, a little bit shorter than I thought. Uh, any questions? Is the MLTK uh, something that is being used by the Cyber Protection Brigade by chance? It, it is, yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Or at least it was. I can say it was. Okay. Thank you.